The question I get posed the most way before I even started YouTube is what's the minimum I should be spending on shoes? And personally, I always tell guys there should be in the $300 to $450 range. To me, that's where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck. That's why the first video that I made in this series, the top shoes between $300 and $500, I figured that was the best way to start, you know what I mean? But a lot of the guys that come to me, whenever I tell them they should be looking somewhere between $300 and $500, I usually get some pushback, especially from guys that are just starting their menswear journey. Some of them, it's not that they don't have the money, it's just that they don't really wanna go all the way in yet. They don't really wanna spend $400 on a pair of shoes. This is really their first first Goodyear wealthy shoes, you know what I'm saying? So they usually ask me, is there anything under $300 that I recommend? The good news is, even though I think that you should start around $300, there's definitely some good options under $300, and this is what this video is all about. But the funny thing is, a lot of the guys that tell me they don't wanna spend more than $300, they're usually wearing like a Louis Vuitton belt that costs about $400, or they're like in those Louboutins with the spikes on them, those shoes are like $1,000, you know what I mean? But I ain't judging, $300, $300, man, I got you. Let's do it. <laughs> Intro. You should come rolling my sh Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Riche from ChaseAndRider.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about the top 10 shoes under $300. It's three different criteria on how I went about picking these brands. Number one are shoes that I own myself, so I'm speaking from personal experience. Number two are shoes that I've recommended to my clients, and they came back to me and tell me that they like the shoes. Number three would be shoes that come highly recommended from sources that I trust. Now, there are some shoes that you're not going to find on this countdown that you're probably expecting. A lot of menswear YouTubers swear by these shoes, but whenever I watch videos of some of these brands I'm looking at the shoes and the shoes look really plastic to me you know what I mean so no you will not find these shoes on this countdown every single shoe on this countdown is Goodyear welted the great thing about Goodyear welted shoes is if the soles wear out and you have to get them switched most reputable cobblers own a Goodyear machine where they can easily replace the sole and um, without further ado let's get to the countdown number 10 we're gonna start with Edward and James Edward and James has four different range of shoes but the one that we're going to cover is from their contemporary range. Edward and James is the in-house brand for a shoe store out of the UK called Pettywear. The shoes are actually made in Spain by a company called Berwick. Berwick is actually on this countdown. We'll talk about them a little bit further down. And they range between 175 to 185. Number nine is a fine pair of shoes. A fine pair of shoes, just like Pettywear before it, is a shoe store out of the UK that started making their own shoes. Their shoes retail for $150. They're made out in Portugal. They look very similar to a brand that we covered in the first video, the shoes between $300 and $500, and that's Carlos Santos. Carlos Santos are also made in Portugal, so I don't know if it's the same factory or not. I had one of my clients buy one of those shoes. He wanted a plane cap to Oxford, and he didn't want to spend too much money on it. He was for work, and he's extremely happy with those shoes. So $150 for some Goodyear welted shoes made in Portugal is very hard to beat. One potential negative with a fine pair of shoes is they're very limited when it comes to styles. They only have two. They have the William, which is the plain cap to Oxford that I was referring to that one of my client got. And they also have the Harry, which is a wingtip. Another thing that you're going to find in this price point, a lot of those shoes really only have a couple different lasts. So as a fine pair of shoes, they only have one last, which is like an almond shaped last. Number eight is another shoe brand that's made in Portugal, and it's a brand called Mergvis. Mergvis is actually a brand from Stockholm, but the shoes are made in Portugal. The interesting part about this brand is they started off as a Kickstarter campaign and they've been very successful ever since. They have three lasts, one is for Oxfords, one is for Boots, and one is for Loafers. Their shoes retail for $208 to $228. The $20 difference is if you wanted your shoes to have a thin rubber sole. So if you like to wear your shoes in the winter time and you live somewhere where it's really icy, you'd have a little bit more traction if you wear your shoes with a rubber sole as opposed to leather. Merkvis makes some nice shoes and starting around $200 is definitely a brand to consider. Number seven is the Herring Classic line. Herring, like a couple of the brands that I mentioned before, also started off as a shoe store. So they have a lot of experience experience of dealing with different sizes and different lasts and different shapes and different brands. So it was a natural progression from them to come from being a shoe store to actually start having their own shoe brand. The shoes are made in England, Spain and Portugal. They are very classic styles, very English and the shoes retail starting around $240. Number six is a brand called Berwick. Berwick shoes are made in Spain and they start at $200. Berwick has multiple lasts and multiple styles to choose from. Now it's time to get into the top five. 
You guys know that I talk about this brand a lot, and that's Spear and McKay. Sometime last year, Spear and McKay came out with their own shoe brand, and they actually just released a bunch of new style with more style coming. The shoes are made in a small factory out of Portugal. This factory has been making shoes for years. Portugal is one of these European countries that's known for making nice shoes. And as you can see, they've appeared multiple times on this countdown already. The shoes retail for $267. They have a few styles to choose from. Some monk straps, some suede, some low they only have one last which is an almond shaped last. Spear and McKay uses full grain box calf leather. At $267, you're getting really good bang for your buck. If you're not familiar with this channel, I have a 20% off code with Spear and McKay that I always include in the descriptions. It's no different with the shoes. They retail at $267 like I was saying, but if you use the code, you get them for under $215 and that includes the shipping. But I would definitely keep my eyes on Spear and McKay. I think that when it comes to shoes, they have a bright future. They do need to come out with more last and eventually they will I'm pretty sure but that's a pretty good start. Number four is the only brand out of France and this brand is called CTM Lager. Now this brand makes some really really nice shoes. A lot of people don't know about them but the people that do know really swear by this brand. The shoes retail for $267. They have four main lines to choose from. They have the 199, they have the 206, they have the 229 and they have the 249. CTM Lager could have easily been number one. One thing about them a lot of time their shoes are so out and their website is not that easy to navigate you know what I mean but they do make some beautiful shoes and they're one of only two shoes on this countdown that has a close channel so number three is Yanko Yanko is a company out of Spain that makes some gorgeous shoes their shoes retail at $295 they're one of the most expensive brand on this countdown but once you lay your eyes on the shoes you'll see why they have some really beautiful lads the most popular being the 915 Yanko is one of the brands that also could have been number one on this countdown Yanko is a great brand that make quality shoes. One nice thing about Yanko is a lot of different retailers carry them. So you can buy shoes directly from Yanko itself or you can buy them from retailers like Skolix. I'll link to the link below on where you can get all the shoes that I'm talking about on this countdown. But definitely keep an eye on Yanko if your budget is just around $300 but you really don't want to go above that. So now we're down to the top two. Number two is a brand that you're probably familiar with. I've mentioned them in my first video of the shoes between $300 and $500, and that's Loke 1880. Loke is a company out of England. The 1880 part is when the company started, so they've been making shoes for years. The shoes that I spoke about in my previous video was the export grade, but this time I'm talking about the 1880 line. The shoes are made in England, and they retail from $265 to $280. Their most popular last is the Capital last, which is a soft square last. They're not the only brand on the countdown from England, but they're the only brand on the countdown where the shoes are actually manufactured in England. My favorite style from Look 1880 is the Strand. The Strand is an Adelaide with a medallion uh, on the Capital Last. The Capital Last is their most popular last, and that's a soft square last. And along with Yanko, Look 1880 is the most expensive brand on the countdown at around $295. And last but not least, we're down to number one, and that's another company out of Spain called Milman. Mailman has two different lines. They have the classic line, which retails at $195, and that's the line that we're going to cover. And they also have the master line, which starts around $300. The difference between the two lines is the classic line is Goodyear welted, and the master line is hand welted, along with some other styles that you find on the master line that you won't find on the classic line. Starting at $195, Mailman is one of the best bank for your buck in the shoe industry. I know a lot of guys that started their quality shoe collection with a pair of Mailman. I'm one of those guys myself since I had my first pair of shoes made from the master line about seven years ago I've added two more shoes from the classic line Mailman has about ten different lasts ranging from chisel to round one thing that I love about Mailman is besides their ready to wear collection on their website every month they come out with new styles of shoes that you can pre-buy they usually have a minimum number that they're looking to reach then once they hit that minimum they'll move forward with the shoes if they don't get enough people then you get your money back so that's a really cool way of getting shoes from Mailman that they don't usually carry you know another great thing about mailman is if you live in New York they have a store in Soho where you can actually walk in and try on the shoes they're the only brand on the countdown where they have a physical presence in the United States albeit only in New York but at least they have one you know what I mean mailman is one of two brands on the countdown that has a closed channel sole that means when you look at the bottom of the shoes you can't see the stitching because it's covered by the leather shoes under $300 that's very hard to find let alone a shoe that's under $200 you know what I'm saying but a couple negative things to keep in mind when it comes to mailman 
women. Number one, their quality control can use some help. Some of the shoes that they send out should only be sold at seconds, but sometimes you'll receive shoes that are defective, and somehow those shoes make it past quality control, which is really odd. Personally, it's never happened to me, but I've seen it happen to other people. The second thing, which is very, very common with male men, is their shoes take forever to break. Those shoes are going to kill your feet for like the first few wears, you know what I mean? Personally, after wearing my shoes about 10 to 15 times, they mold to your feet and they become very comfortable just like any other shoes, you know? So just keep that in mind. They're not one of those shoes that you put them on and they're comfortable from the first wear. You do have to work with them, but at under $200 for good year welted shoes with good leather, close channel sole, it's really, really hard to beat mailmen and that's why they're number one on the countdown. So that was the top 10 shoes under $300. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe, or everybody gonna think that you a hater, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.